Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now today's lore video starts with something pretty familiar, but by the end it gets pretty wild. Not only does it seem like we are feeding Nazoth power, but there is a bit of a hidden revelation connecting the world soul of Azeroth to the Emerald Nightmare raid that ties into our actions in Battle for Azeroth and how they may be tremendously dangerous and self-sabotaging. Now that might be a lot to take in, but thankfully I do have something that is safe and self-improving for you though. Uh, today's sponsor, Audible. Hit up the link below to get a free audiobook of your choice with a 30-day trial. Much of the WoW library is there, and if you would like to check out something that isn't WoW, my personal recommendation is Principles by Ray Dalio. It's one of my favorite books in months. Ray has a fairly unique perspective on life and work, but more about the book later, so check out the link for a free audiobook and let's get into the lore. So when you hit Revered with the Champions of Azeroth, you go down for a quick empowerment. That all seems normal. Now sadly there's no voice acting here, but Magni comments on how well the chamber's looking and that within it our Heart of Azeroth can grow even more mighty. Right as we finish empowering the Heart, a Void Tear arrives. The Void is strongly attracted to the Heart of Azeroth, presumably because of the sheer amount of energy that we have been concentrating in it. Now, a being begins to appear from this tear, and it says, The master hungers, the heart shall feed his waking dream. What does Magni do right after hearing this? He immediately commands us to use the heart of Azeroth to drive the beast away. Energy surges through the portal, and it looks exactly what it looks like when we just generally empower things with the heart of Azeroth. As we channel energy through the void tear, the being says, You will falter, he rises, he rises. And with that, the Void Terror closes. Now after that, Magni pretty much just says, grats, but the actual quest text lets on a little bit more. He kind of knows that, you know, the more we grow the heart, the, you know, the larger the target on our back is, and that we cannot afford to lose either the heart or the player. So Magni does seem to be aware of how dangerous this whole plan is. And I'd just like to remind you that Azeroth is seeping power into the land. We are then collecting that power in one concentrated point, the heart of Azeroth one point of failure, which is very worrisome, because sure, the Void seems to have trouble corrupting the Chamber or the World Soul, but corrupting you, corrupting the Heart of Azeroth, well, that seems a hell of a lot more plausible. Now, we are told here that the Heart feeds the Master's waking dream. Now, if we're to take that literally, and remember how we just carelessly flung energy through a portal, the exit of which was a total mystery to us, now it seems even more worrying. Now this quest represents the maximum canonical power level of the Heart of Azeroth as, um, you know, as, as, as of yet. Right as we finish the empowerment, we then unleash the full energy right into the enemy. Now seeing as this void creature chooses to appear, doesn't even attempt to attack us, it would seem like it's a trap of some sort. Now we can go a lot deeper though, because the King of Diamonds has been made a pawn. We all remember this line, and it very much seems like it's referring to Magni. Is he evil? No, but it could mean that he's being played. Now, first, it is likely literally true he sort of is a pawn of Azeroth, but willingly. From the perspective of Ilganoth, that does make sense. Now, what it could be alluding to, though, to, to players, is that Magni does not have great perspective, and that in being so connected to Azeroth, he may have quite the blind spot. And it would seem that this blind spot was kind of shown to us in what he thought the best course of action was when faced with this predicament. Now, we hear about the Master's waking dream. So remember that Nazoth is the master of the Emerald Nightmare, and the Emerald Nightmare corruption was caused when the roots of Nordrasil touched yogg -Saron's prison, but of course, yogg -Saron gave control of the Nightmare to Nazoth, recognizing that it suited his powers best. Now, while it is true that we cleansed much of the Emerald Dream in Legion's Emerald Nightmare raid, well, I just do not trust that at all, because once the raid is finished, we're pulled into the heart of the Emerald Dream. Now, we know that this is the very heart of the dream because that is how Scenarius describes it to us. It almost seems like a Titan control room. At the very least, you can see that Scenarius is standing on top of what looks like a Titan vault entrance, a dais, a, a construct, something like that, some like machinery. So it's the very core of the Emerald Dream. Now, we had always thought that the dream was created by Freya under the Titan's instruction to be a version of Azeroth as if mortals had never been there or touched it. Well, what if I told you that this was a half-truth? Freya might have bounded it or shaped it into its current form, but according to uh, Chronicle Volume 1, it may have always been there, born from the wandering mind of the world soul of Azeroth. Now, we're also told that while Magni serves as uh, speaker, he doesn't just repeat words that Azeroth gives him. Azeroth communicates through feeling and image, and much of those images are natural things 
like a sunrise. That's literally told to us. So this further reinforces the link between the world soul of Azeroth and the dream. So if the dream comes from Azeroth herself, then it stands to reason that the heart of the dream is connected to Azeroth, the world soul. Now take note of how her chamber only begins to experience void problems after the Emerald Nightmare Raid. Now, of course, once in the run up to 7-3, and then once again when we try to empower the Heart of Azeroth. How could this be possible? Well, after the Emerald Nightmare Raid, we learn that we have, of course, um, introduced Void Corruption into the Dream. Somewhere where it's, and uh, not just the Dream, the Heart of the Dream, which is somewhere where it seemingly had not been uh, before. And right as we do that, Zalatath comments that the final prison is weakening. So, what if we just channeled the power of the Heart of Azeroth through that Void Terror and into the Seed of Corruption that is in the Nightmare? If that was the case, then the Void could begin to influence Azeroth the World Soul, which would influence Magni, without him knowing. Therefore, the King of Diamonds has been made a pawn. Okay, we may have got a little bit kooky by the end of that, a little bit mad, a little bit crazy, the old tinfoil hat, but I don't think it's too mad. And when you think back to the Emerald Nightmare Raid, they put that seed of void uh, corruption in there very deliberately. And it just seems to me like this is a pretty sensible extrapolation of that. At the very least, we know that Blizzard has this trend of making our actions bite us in the ass down the line. And this certainly does line up with that. So yeah, that was a uh, fairly big video. And uh, whatever's going on with the Emerald Dream right now, uh, yeah, it can't be good. But what is good is Ray Dalio's Principles. It's probably my favorite book in its genre, one of my favorite books in months. And um, especially his work and um, life and leadership principles are things that I apply to my everyday life and work. I cannot recommend it highly enough. You can get it for, three, uh, for free with a 30-day trial through Audible in the link below. Massive help for the channel and a massive help for the game development that I do as well. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And with that, I will see you next time.